Hi, thank you for watching today. My name's Sarah and my channel is called Your Tree Shelf. Today I'm filming a massive haul for February, which is a bit good in one way because yay books, bad in another way because I said I want to haul as little as possible this year and um, yeah, that's really kind of gone out the window. To be fair, I didn't buy most of these books, so they were either gifted to me which I obviously really appreciate, or loan to me. Um, I will just add as well, I am sitting on the floor, so I'm going to fidget, just to warn you. Um, so the first book is one I actually did buy, and it's one that I um, bought in December, I think. I just totally forgot to include it in my last haul. And this is a book I, read, I bought after I heard the author interviewed by... Um, Dr. Rongen Chatterjee um, on his podcast, Feel Better, Live More. And it's called um, The Book You Wish Your Parents Had Read and Your Children Will Be Glad That You Did by um, Philippa Perry. So this book is a parenting book and um, when I had the interview with her, I thought she spoke so much sense and really understood um, what it's like to be a parent and what the kind of things you face are at times. And I thought that her book sounded like it would be really helpful if it's as good as the interview. And it's not too big. And um, so, yeah, that's the that's the first one that I got. The next... Right, hold on. Let me divide them up. The next one I got is one I had... Um, I think I put it on my wish list. I think it was after Simon Savage talked about it on his channel. And I nearly bought it from the library and put it back because it was only on seven day loan. And then I found it in a charity shop. So I was like, bonus. So um, that is The Familiars by Stacey Halls. So all I remember about this is it's about a woman in Victorian time? No, way before. 1612. Um, she's 17. She's pregnant for the fourth time. And she has no living children. And then she crosses paths with a midwife who promises to give her a healthy child. And she's drawn into the accusations of witchcraft. It sounds really good. And the cover, as you can see, is lovely. It's got some gorgeous gold bits on. It's quite a chunky book. But it sounds like it's going to be quite pacey and, um, and really enjoyable. So, um, yeah, I couldn't resist that one. And then another one. This is the only book two when I went into this bookshop. Um, this is a, um, a nature book from the 80s, so I think it was published in 1984. Um, so this is called A Last Wild Place by Mike Tomkies. And this has got an inscription inside, which I love. Look, I'll show you. It's all yellow inside. Look at this. So it says... Um, to aunt, for Auntie Bunny and Uncle George, enjoy it before it's lost forever with Love Sally, Christmas 89. Mm. And that's really sad that she thought the wildlife was all going to go in 1989. I mean, that was like 20, 31, 31 years ago. And we were, you know, shame more people weren't worried about the environment then. So this is um, basically um, talks about life in the uh, for a man who left city life in order to study the wilderness in the northwest of scotland and it's also got um some photos and things in there as well so um i really love nature writing and it's i think it's going to be really cool to read one from the 80s because there won't be like the same technology available and stuff so yeah it'll be cool to um to read that one this is, the next one is one that I just picked up at work. Like there's a little bookshelf at work where people just drop off books when they don't want them anymore. And um, I picked this one up. It's, I've seen it talked about before. It's After the Party by Cressida Connolly. Um, set in, the, in 1938. And a girl called Phyllis who's returned to England after years abroad. She moves to her sister's grand country house. Is entangled in a world of idealistic beliefs and seemingly innocent friendships. And then there's talk of war in their small privileged circle. And then, so she says she lets down her guard for a moment at a party with devastating consequences. So, um, mm, sounds interesting. And then, so, then I went to my friend Hannah's house. And I'm just trying to get all the books together. Five books from Hannah's house. So, um, I think... Some of them were ones that her husband was giving away and some of them were ones that they just told me that were really good. So the first one is one that I wouldn't normally have picked up but um, 
yeah, so Hannah's husband, Matt, said that it was really good. And um, that is uh, A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towels. And this is, so, set in 1922, um, somebody who is very posh, <laughs> a count, um, is escorted out of the Kremlin, across Red Square, and through the elegant revolving doors of the Hotel Metropole. Um, he's deemed an unrepentant aristocrat, and he's sentenced to house arrest indefinitely. So he must live in an attic room while Russia undergoes decades of upheaval. And it says, can a life without luxury be the richest of all? So that's that one. Then um, one which is another old one. So this is from uh, 1999. And this is a non-fiction book. And this is um, Jane Goodall, Reason for Hope. And this is about her time in which Tanzania, um, conducting field research about wild chimpanzees. And it says it's her fascinating life story from her childhood in war England to the struggles and triumphs of the chimps on the Gombe Reserve, um, through to the death of her beloved husband and her deep concern for the current environmental crisis. Um, so, yeah, that one sounds like completely my cup of tea as well. Um, the next one says it's shortlisted by for the Man Booker Prize in 2016 and another nature themed book um, which is um, A Whole Life by Robert C. C. Taylor C. Taylor I'm not sure how you pronounce the surname um, that one and there's not really much about it it just says that he knows um, and Andreas Egger knows every path and peak of his mountain valley the source of his sustenance his livelihood his home Set in the mid-20th century and told with beauty and tenderness, his story is one of a man's relationship with an ancient landscape of the value of solitude, the arrival of the modern world, and of the moments, great and small, that make us who we are. This is going to be quite a short, a short read, I think. Um, then the other two that I borrowed from them was... Um, this one just made me laugh, like, reading the back. It sounds really really fun it's um called talking about jane austen in baghdad the story of an unlikely friendship and it's about two women so may and b um may is um a lecturer in english uh she's an iraqi living in baghdad and b is uh it says a london mum of three busy fighting off pta meetings and chicken pox dealing with dead cats and generally juggling work and family while squabbling with her grey trotting husband over the socks he leaves lying around the house and then they get they get brought together by an email and then they form a friendship which is um sounds really <gasps> fascinating and then the last one i got from the house is um a vintage classic by neville shoot i've never read neville shoot but i remember that um thomas from the readers podcast used to talk about neville shoot a lot uh and so i have got my copy now so this was originally written in um, 1950, and um, I'm not really sure what it's about. So this is about a 20-year-old girl called Jean. She's working in Malaya when the Japanese invasion begins. She is captured. She joins a group of other women and children who the jungle, sorry, who the Japanese forced to walk for miles through the jungle, leading to the deaths of many. Um, so, um, yeah, a gripping and moving story. Um, right, so that's that section. Then I got one for free in a swap library, which um, I just liked the title and then I thought it sounded really good and it's in perfect condition. Um, it is called The Postcard by Leah Fleming. And uh, this is another one which is set around wartime, and uh, 1930s London and also 2002 Australia and um, it's talking about life in the wartime and then about a, a family secret which has obviously been kept since then and in 2002 there's a woman on her deathbed who is trying to reunite some family members who um, are involved in this deep secret. That's that. Right. See, I told you that was a lot of books. My tea bar has like gone out of control. So next, um, my friend Nicola and I met, um, we meet in this vegan cafe in Suffolk uh, every month or so, 
and there's a really good secondhand bookshop just behind it so obviously we always go there and these books the books are like ridiculously cheap and they're really good and they're normally in really good condition i'm just gonna have to move because my legs are going dead right um and so i got five but no four books there and then nicola lent me another one so that's five i'm not tall enough now hold on there we go um so the fact the one that nicola lent me was um paper air oh i'll get my position wait a minute paper airplanes by dorno porter um this is about two schoolgirls in the 90s and it she said it's like just an easy fun read so um i've wanted to try dorno porter for a while then I've picked up a book that I remember being on all the like offer tables in Waterstones for a while and I remember like my mum wanted to listen to it on Audible and I don't know why, I can't remember why we didn't get it. But anyway, so I saw it and that is, this is absolutely perfect edition, it was a pound. The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. So you know, this is her historical, there's actually nothing about it. Oh yes there is, it's on the inside cover. So it's set in the 1880s. Uh, about a guy who finds a pocket watch on his pillow and the watch saves him from a blast that destroys Scotland Yard. He goes in search of its maker, who's a Japanese immigrant, and someone else is tr sneaking into an Oxford library desperate to prove the existence of the luminiferous ether before her mother can force her to marry. Hmm. So that's that one. Oh, I've still got really bad pins and needles on my leg. Um, right. Don't do that then, Mum. Then I have one that everyone's heard about, everyone talked about last year, loads, and this is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Again, one pound, mint condition, bargain. Um, so I think everybody knows this is about the Trojan War and it's supposed to be the retelling from the women's point of view, but people have said it's a little bit too wrapped up in Achilles, but um, I wanted to read it for myself just because everyone talked about it so much last year. Then... This one, I don't really know what it's about, but it's by Graham Norton. I read A Keeper last year or the year before and really, really enjoyed it. And so this is another book. This is his first book, which is uh, Holding by Graham Norton. Surprise, surprise. Um, so this is like a crime book, I think. Um, I don't really want to read too much about what it's about because I don't want to spoil the plot. Um, oh, my legs. <laughs> I'm not going to sit on the... Mum! <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, yeah. I don't need to say any more about that. And then the last one... I'm getting smaller and smaller. The last one is um, a bit which I saw Heather talk about, and I've watched the film of it many years ago. And because Heather loved it so much, I really wanted to pick it up. And it is The Descendants by Carrie Hart Hemmings. And all I remember from Heather talking about it is that it's set in Hawaii. I think this guy's wife has some sort of, or him, has some sort of, like, ancestral claim over some land in Hawaii. And the wife is in a coma and he's having to learn how to be a father to his kids because I think he's been quite absent. I think they're quite wealthy. And he has to sort of, all his what life's kind of turned upside down. He has to decide what to do. Then, the last ones. Oh no, hold on. So the last before I go to the last ones, this is a, there's another one that Hannah and Matt lent me. Um, this one here, an officer and a spy by Robert Harris, um, set in Paris in 1895. It's kind of a spy novel, um, so I will give that one a go at some point. And then finally, I've got four little books that um, I've talked about for my Reading Women's Challenge, but they're four little books that Heather made a package for me and sent them as a surprise, which is super kind of her. And I will just show you the four books. So the first one is A Little um, Tiny Faber Story by Barbara King Silver. And I believe it's about a Native American woman who, um, who was... Um, in in this place in Tennessee and she leaves and then her family take her back and it's not at all like she remembered it 
There's then um, this book that everyone's read apart from me, which is Greta Thunberg and No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference, which um, everybody knows what this is about. And then the next two are ones I never heard of. So this one is The Old Two Old Women by Velma Wallace. And this is an Athabascan Indian legend set in the Yukon Valley in Alaska. And it's about two, women, two old women who are abandoned by their tribe in a winter during a famine. And it's kind of like a myth and legend story, which I'm gonna use for my prompt for, based on folklore for the Reading Women Challenge. And then the last one is a Mary Stewart book, which is really small. It's set in Lanzarote in 1879. And it's about a, a, a wealthy young woman eloping with an, impoverished, blah, 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 an impoverished fisherman and never to be seen again. And then a century later, a 23-year-old secretary to a famous author researches and she meets Cora's estranged son and falls under Lanzarote's spell. So that is um, The Wind Off the Small Isles by Mary Stewart. So let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 books. That is crazy. <sighs> I was hoping to get like four a month and that, that I've just like gone through six months of allowance. Like I really, really, really want to read what I've got. And I'm I'm not being ungrateful because I'm really pleased that people have read me books and that um, I got gifted some books. But I really need to like nip it in the bud buying any more books. Try because... Yeah, one of my resolutions was to read backlist and not keep buying stuff because I've probably, like, I see some people who have a TBR of, like, 20 books <clears throat> and I envy them. Like, whilst it's really nice for me to come into my office and be like, oh my goodness, like, look at all these amazing books, it can feel overwhelming sometimes. And I kind of am sad that if I keep going at the same rate with buying, I will never be able to read all of these books because... It would take me a few years just to get through the ones I've got now. So, yeah, I need to think on that. Share your tips. How do you get down to such a small TBR without just being completely ruthless and getting rid of everything? Because I do want to read everything on my TBR. Anyhow, um, let me know if you have any thoughts about the books that I mentioned. And let me know if you've read any of them and what you thought. And I will speak to you soon for another video. Bye.